Have you ever wondered why Curtis Jr. doesn't look anything like his dad? Well, much like Curtis Sr., Curtis Jr. is a miner. Specifically, a coal miner. He gets a little dirty sometimes. Come here, stinky boy, you need a bath. Welcome back to Hitchhiker's SMP. It's great to finally have a little time to hang out with you. It's been another rough month. Between episodes, I updated us to 119 and regenerated everything outside our build areas. So pretty soon we can go visit some ancient cities in the deep dark and maybe find ourselves a gort horn. Before any of that, I've got a huge build ready to kick off. Probably the biggest survival build I've done yet. I've been putting this thing off for way too long, so let's get a move on. We'll check back on Curtis Jr. later. Our build site for this project is in the end, and we're gonna be using a gateway to get there. Conveniently, someone has opened up all the gateways already, except for three of them, inconveniently, because one of those three is the one that we need. So we're gonna fight a dragon. Rice. Uh, with wings, this should be pretty easy, though. One down, two to go. Oh. Okay, right, yeah, don't stand up on top of these things when they're generating. They go splody. Last one. Ah, that was stupid. We're going to use this gateway here, right by our starting platform. Of course, we could fly out there, but we're going to want transport back and forth nice and easy. Now, I could just put up a normal ladder or water elevator or something up here, but that's kind of boring. I'd like to get a water elevator that takes you straight up into the portal. And to do that, I'm going to start off by grabbing some obsidian. And we're going to use that to build ourselves a little safety platform here while we blow up this bedrock. So how we're going to do this is we've got a couple TNT here, we've got obsidian here, we're going to put a piston facing that way, and we've got a lever on this block there like that. Then we've got this trapdoor here that puts us into crawl mode. So we can reach right here to place a piston while this piston is firing and blowing up. I wish I could explain the specifics of this, but I'm not that smart. What I can tell you is that when this lever gets thrown, it powers this piston and these two TNTs, and the explosions and the update order kind of cooperate and it confuses this piston and the block below it. If you did things right, this piston will just stay there. If you did it wrong, it'll change directions. Now, an important thing to do is you should change your keybind for right click to, to any keyboard key that you can. And it's gonna take a minute to get used to it, but what that does is it allows you to hold the key down in order to spam the placement of the piston. And in doing so, it'll offer more chances to throw the new piston in place of this one. So that's what we're gonna do. So now I'm gonna stand off to the side here, away from this piston, because this piston is gonna push, and I'm gonna hit this lever, open this, get up in here, and hold that key down. Boom, here we go. So it changed direction, it's facing down. So now let's, let's do this again. And yeah, I'm placing these with the keyboard key to do that. You get used to it. So we're gonna hit the switch, hit the door, get up here, hold the button down and boom. 
piston is facing us. And it is gone. 11 left to go. So this one right here is a little bit more of a pesky guy. We're gonna need to use a different technique. What we're gonna do is place a piston against it here with some easily breakable blocks. We're gonna power the piston on, and then we're gonna bud power it and remove the bottom lever. We're gonna place a block of TNT here, a lever right next to it. So we're gonna be placing a piston right here where this piston is on the exposed spot. It's hard to see because of the obsidian texture, but we're gonna place some here to help us see where that is. Plus this is also gonna block the blast. Also, I don't really trust myself, so I'm gonna wall myself in here and get our piston ready, hit the lever, and here we go. Aha! Ah, and it worked. Awesome. Then this one here, we can just use the other technique. All right. And I'll try not to get sucked into this gateway. Here we go. <laughs> Easy peasy. So now I've got a water elevator set up to take you directly into the gateway portal block from a walkway below. And made sure to light everything up so no Enderman will spawn here. I've also made sure to light up across the way so that no Endermen will spawn where you'll be looking, except for some stragglers up top. Maybe I'll light up up there later. Now there's nothing too special about this platform except all of these blocks are non-solid. What that means is they're all either slabs or stairs, except for this block right here. The reason for that is because end gateways will spawn the player on the highest block within an 11 by 11 area around it. So that means from this center spot, it can spawn you anywhere five blocks out in each direction. And all of these blocks are non-solid. By the way, full glass blocks are solid, but panes are not. The only block in this area that is solid is this one. So when you come back from the gateway, it will spawn you here. Now we've got to prepare the other side, and we're going to go the long way because I want to force generate where the other portal is located. Now to do that, the quick and dirty way is to fly straight from the center of the island through this gateway a thousand blocks out, basically right up to the edges of those end islands. Now you can calculate exactly where that's going to be, but I'm not going to bore you with those details. If you'd like to know more about how these things work, I'll be leaving a link in the description to Nembom's video of how end gateways work. I picked this location because we've got this end city over here, and it has not been raided yet, and the gateway should be spawning right about here. Now the way the gateway spawning works is pretty similar to the way that the player spawning works, where it will pick the highest block. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna bring this up because the build that we're doing, I don't want it to be under the end islands. I'd like it to be floating up a good distance. Yeah, that should do. So now we just gotta fly back. By the way, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I've been running 32 render distance thanks to a mod called Bobby. Link will be in the description. And uh, what this mod does is it saves server chunks to your computer, so that way you're not limited by the server render distance. Let's give this a test. What should happen is the new gateway should spawn right on top of that pillar that we just made. If it doesn't, I will cry. Yes. So now I've got a spot for us to spawn on. Uh, again, it's gonna it's gonna spawn you up on the highest solid blocks. So when we come back, it's gonna want to choose one of these guys and put us there. So let's go ahead and fly into this guy. And here we are. Yep, right here as expected. Now when we go through, we should end up on the nether rack. 
Perfect. Alright, so now I gotta break this bedrock and then build the actual farm. He's still not quite clean enough. Time for the spin cycle. This should scrub out the rest of all that coal dust. And he'll be nice and squeaky clean. A couple episodes ago we built this thing. And since then I've made some improvements, thanks to some suggestions you guys had. I added some more color up top by replacing these flowers. And I also completely forgot about adding vines and bushy things. That adds a lot more color to the top. I think it helps balance things out a bit and much better accomplishes the look that we're going for. This farm's been doing pretty decent. I, I, I really haven't been hanging out here, but some of the other guys have. Oh, 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 hey, I see you. Yeah, you're mine now. You know, I think I'll take a second to mention Ender Chest organization. If you are not doing this, you really, really should do this. My Ender Chest has pretty much everything anyone should ever need. Each box is organized and labeled and colored. So I've got a wood box with all the saplings that I need to grow stuff. It's got bone meal in it, some, some junk parts. Uh, mob drops. I've got a backup box, which I don't have done yet. I need to add another set of gear in it. A brewing box that I don't have complete yet either. Redstone box, very important. Plants, I like to have like an ice and glass box. I've also got a transportation box and that's got stuff for transporting and luring mobs and players. Box of shiny stuff, tools, some rocks, dirt, grass, and I keep my shovel in there because that's basically when I use it. Some junk boxes, so while you're out and about, you got space to put stuff. Um, just a, a blocks box. I've got a couple missing. I'll be getting to them eventually. I don't usually like to use black shulker boxes, just because just they kind of don't look like a shulker box. It kind of looks like black concrete. And something that really helps organize this stuff too, uh, which you may or may not have access to, is bundles. I went and made a temporary bunny sanctuary so I can make some bundles to help keep things organized in here. Uh, I know bundles are still experimental, but I, I, I think they work great as they are. They could use some improvements, but I would much rather use them than not. And what's great about these is you can use them to round up your little piles of junk to save you some space. So I, I don't need to carry a lot of turtle eggs and nautilus shells and stuff like that. So you can easily compact that kind of stuff so that you can fill up slots with more important things. Like you can use it to round up all your little crafted bits. So stairs and slabs and things that you don't need a lot of and you just got extras laying around, bundle them up. Something else I like to do with them is I like to make little kits. So something like, you know, maybe a furnace kit. I can have furnace and fuel for it in the same bundle. Another one for maybe general workstations. You can tidy those things up. Now, I would recommend you don't have too many things inside of there because it gets tedious to take those things out unless you throw them on the ground, but still that sucks too. They're also handy for like random redstone things that you don't need a lot of. Another thing that's handy is when you're organizing your boxes, when you have like a box of rocks Keep a stone cutter in there, because you're going to be using this thing with that box pretty often. Pretty much don't be afraid to keep something that's kind of random in these boxes, like, like the shovel in my dirt box. Uh, I also keep bone meal in a, a few different boxes, like my plants and my wood. So, everything we need for this gigantic build can fit in this one box. That is if I had enough shulker boxes to fill this thing. I told you it was big. In the meantime, I've got everything stored over here, which is okay because, have I even told you what this farm is? It's a shulker farm. So after I build the main farm part, I'll have plenty of boxes to put this stuff in. Super duper special thank you to everybody that's been helping out with this. The hitchhikers have pitched in to get me some materials. So this section is all filled with slime from Curtis's slime farm. This section here is filled with deep slate. 
I think pretty much everyone's helped out with that. I did about half of it, and while I was getting the deep slate, I was also putting my diamond theory to the test from the other episode. Remember when I showed you guys that squiggly digging technique? I gave it the test by filling six shulker boxes full of deep slate. Using that squiggly method to fill those six shulker boxes of deep slate, it took me three hours, and it turned up 43 blocks of diamond and seven loose ones. I also tested out just digging straight, but not just straight straight, because that's pretty slow. If you hold forward and left, or right, uh, in this case, I'm holding forward and left. Hey, look at you. If you hold forward and left while you aim at the right side of the block, it actually makes you go considerably faster. It's not super fast, as you can see, but it is faster. Here, I'll turn my mini HUD on, and you can see my speed going forward right now in the top left is 1.0. 295. And if we use the sideways digging method, it gets us a little bit more. You can see it's 1.536 right now. And that can be adjusted by uh, the angle that you're hitting the side. There's kind of a sweet spot, but you also have to remember that when you mine the blocks on the side, it, it's going to be slowing you down a little bit too. So you just want to make sure that you go as fast as the blocks in front of you are getting broken just right about here so like 1.6 ish is is that's that's good speed but still this took way too long so going straight turned up also 43 blocks of diamonds and four loose ones which is very very comparable so both methods will turn up about the same amount of diamonds but digging straight took me four hours by the way to fill those six shulkers going straight i had to dig 10,000 blocks. Oh yeah, and Curtis gave us sea lanterns from his guardian farm. So now I just gotta craft all this stuff up. Oof, that was a solid half hour. I wasn't kidding when I said it can all fit in this box. Uh, like, if all the materials were loaded up into shulkers and put in here, there would be no space left so many materials i don't know if i'm looking forward to the build anymore but we got one step left i have to turn all these deep slate tiles in this section into cracked tiles i'm just gonna make a little temporary smelter setup right here at spawn what's nice about building these at spawn is that in any loaded chunks such as the spawn chunks it will keep cooking even if there's no players around. And for fuel, I think I'm gonna use lava. And for the buckets, since I don't have an iron farm, I'm gonna buy some from Curtis's shop. Craft up a pile of buckets here and mooch up his lava. Curtis didn't have enough lava. gonna snag this guy up drink myself a potion of invisibility bridge a rail over hope he doesn't see me oh he sees me it doesn't really help when you leave your armor on mobs can also see you better when you get close to them so there's, there's that too mobs get picked up when you run a rail right next to them so that's what we're gonna do we're just gonna push that guy over there I didn't bother putting any powered rails down on the line because I'm just going to use a minecart furnace, a, a feature that nobody really seems to use too much. It's perfect for this because you don't have to run any powered rails. One piece of coal will last you three minutes of pushing, so that's plenty enough to do this job. Here we go. Yes. Oh, ah, uh, problems. Whoopsie doodles. I should not have had the rail running while I was bringing him here. All right, 
I'm just gonna pop these off. Hope he doesn't see us. Here we go. Cross fingers. Yes. Oh, that should be a working shulker farm. So I guess eventually this guy should target these snow golems down here and the missile will be deflected and come back up and hit him and he'll duplicate. I think it's already working. We can see two shulkers in this compartment. So what makes this farm different than past designs, they call this a turbocharged farm where the shulkers that are firing here are allowed to duplicate and stack up so that more of them can fire at more targets. The other thing that makes it fast is all this scaffolding. Shulkers will be attracted to the underside of these platforms because that's the only place that they can teleport to. And they don't see this scaffolding as an obstruction until they open. When they open, they immediately teleport somewhere else and they prioritize going upwards. So you can funnel them up to a collection point right here. And this collection point is the only one that the farm has, so all they do is keep dumping in here, and any extras just entity cram themselves to death. And we collect it in this box here. I doubt it, but let's see if we have anything yet. Uh, oh, yeah, we've got, we've got another rack. Hooray. We'll get shells soon enough. It, it does not take too long. This farm is super, super, super fast. Because of that, I think I've made the decision to not AFK here for too long. I'll only stick around for the amount of time it takes to get what I need. The reason it's in the end, by the way, is because of the mob cap. By having it out here in the end, it won't affect the overworld mob cap, as opposed to having one in the spawn chunks or something that is permanently affecting our world. Now this design is apparently already outdated, but I already had my modifications to it planned out. I, I just stuck with the older design. If you want to check this stuff out, the guy who's been leading these designs, uh, his name is Ending Credits, and his channel link will be in my video description. I'm just going to run this until I have enough boxes to move the rest of the stuff, and then I'll be getting to the real work. This episode is brought to you by Lightmatica. No, I'm not making any money off of this. It's just without the Lightmatica mod, I may have needed some mental help. I could consider this thing to be like a season project if it weren't for Lightmatica making it a bit easier. If you're unaware of what that does is it shows you where the blocks need to be placed. So I designed this thing in creative mode and then came here and plopped the blocks down. While admittedly it's not super big in terms of overall dimensions, it has a lot of depth. The walls are eight block layers thick and it used up over 80,000 blocks. I'm pretty happy with how this thing turned out. It's modeled after the Borg cube, uh, the spaceship for the Borg in Star Trek. Now, I'm not like an expert 
on this. So this is just kind of vaguely modeled after them. Also, I don't know if you could tell really, but it's got the subtle texturing of a shulker. You can see that where like the there's darker patches and lighter patches. And then underneath, you can even see that it's got that spiral design. The reason that this thing is so big is because there needs to be space where the shulkers won't be able to teleport to the walls. I didn't want to put buttons and like non-solid blocks everywhere, so I just made it really, really big. And that length is about 10 blocks. I think it's like 8 blocks that they can teleport. Uh, I gave a little bit of extra space. And uh, I don't know if you saw in the time lapse, I had a little bit of an incident over here where I didn't place the next layer of blocks quick enough and I had a whole row of shulkers teleport down from this storage area and they just lined themselves up here and I had a bad time. Now the Borg in Star Trek are a hive mind collective. They don't have a governing hierarchy, their entire ship is decentralized, they don't have specific rooms like a bridge or a teleporter room, so that's why I've got the gateway out here. I, I would have made a teleporter room for that, but instead I've got it right here so we can go through the gateway to get back. Here we are, and to get to the ship, go through this, and we will be teleported right here under this block. We've got a 3x3 three three door to take us in here, and this is the farm. Don't hang out here too much. Uh, they they can spot you if you're unlucky. And uh, it's been doing really, really good. I, I haven't run it the whole time that I've been building. Uh, it's, it's, the sound is obnoxious, so and the bullets are dangerous. So I, I've had it off and I, I've had it running a little bit here. Oh, this is a head from that incident. This build was kind of terrifying. I played a lot of Skyblock, but... Uh, if you fall in the void here, there's no keep inventory on. All your stuff gets lost. That's why I made that big old safety net down there out of another rack. <laughs> Most of these stray bullets are actually chasing the snow golems inside there. But you should still keep an eye out. I'm not sure if you noticed, but this is not a cottage core build. In case you forgot, this is Hitchhiker's SMP. The season may be cottage core, but the underlying theme for everything is space. Now, obviously, these guys are not the Borg. Maybe we'll need to call them something else. Maybe we'll call them the Shulk. I don't know. You guys come up with a backstory. Let me know your ideas. I think it'll be fun. So now that this thing is done, we've got plenty of Shulker shells that we can use to create some other fun stuff. This is kind of what's been holding me back on making a base, is because I wanted to actually focus my storage area around Shulker storage. I'm thinking maybe next episode I should do that. I think maybe we should share some of these with the other guys. Let's go drop them off. One for the Lost Midgen. One for Red Gabs. A participation trophy for Rusty. And one for Curtis. It says... For your efforts in the gathering of materials for Gort's Shulker Farm, I ask that you please accept this Shulker Shell. Thank you for all your help. They're gonna love it. Ooh, let's go check on Curtis Jr. Oh, so much better. Nice and clean. Perfectly pale like his father. Well, I guess we can get him off into the dryer. Well, thanks for hanging out with me today, guys. I just cannot wait to get started on using all those shells up. I really, really, really like shulker boxes. If you had a good time, don't forget to punch the like button. And until next time, this is Gort, signing out. He shrunk a little bit. See? I told you he looks just like Curtis.